Um, well, what I found in this training is um, a really simple and powerful set of instructions that allowed me to um, take responsibility for my life and to really see that it's up to me how I live. It's up to me how I utilize my mind and my speech, my body, how I spend my time, where I put my energy. And um, before this training, I'd, I'd felt either helpless in terms of not really feeling like I had much say in what was going on, either in my own life or you know, in the world as a whole, Or I'd been so caught up in everything, so caught up in indulging, avoiding and replacing all of my thoughts, emotions and sensations that that had been the complete focus of all of my time and energy. And in the Balance View training we can call all of this experience, all of these perceptions data and that just keeps it very simple. And all of the data are known by exactly the same open intelligence. So when you stop thinking for a moment, you allow yourself an opportunity to notice the foundation and the basis for all of your experience. And you can do that right here and right now. Just stop thinking for a moment and recognize the intelligence by which everything is known. And in doing so, what happens is that you get a clearer and clearer perspective on the nature of all of the data. You see that there is no datum that can be found to have a nature separate or independent from the open intelligence by which it's known. And why it's important to recognize this and then to train this up through the repetition of these short moments is that we become more and more comfortable with this flow of completely unpredictable experience. Completely comfortable with this stream of data that's just streaming through our mind. And the taking responsibility was for me just as simple as the instruction to bring it back to my own experience again and again. And the habitual training in giving data an independent nature and the effect that that has on the way that we relate to ourselves and other people becomes more and more obvious as well. And we begin to laugh at the ways that this plays out and the, the subtleties that we begin to see that this entails. So for example, after the introduction to open intelligence, we begin to see all kinds of things about ourselves, all kinds of things about the way that we've related and used our incredible potency as a human being. We see the, the, the pervasive negativity that we've been trained in and the pervasive negativity that is echoed in our media and in our society. So much so that it really seems to be the way that things are. You know, we're living in a, a state of absolute desperation and you know, we're all about to die due to one apocalyptic event or another, you know, and you pick up the paper and it's a different one each day. And, and so it's so easy to buy into this. But we have to start with ourselves. If we want to change the world, it has to start with ourselves. Otherwise, it's just more hot air. It's just hypocritical. And um, to see the subtleties of the way this plays out and... Um, I saw for myself very quickly that the becoming aware of judgments and criticisms and negativity in other people, but then suddenly recognizing just how judgmental, critical and negative I was of other people's negativity. <laughs> and again, just to bring the focus back to myself and taking responsibility for my own data was a really powerful stand to take there. Because whilst I was still completely indulging in my data about other people's negativity and judgment and criticism, then I was just doing it exactly the same as they were. Perhaps thinking that I was slightly more superior because I could see what they were doing, but actually no different at all. And so that 
taking responsibility and just bringing it back again and again to my choice that I have in each moment. And the, the choice just to allow myself to be exactly as I am with all of my data, with all of my negativity and judgment and criticism, with all of my hopes and fears, allowing all of it to be exactly as it is. And well, how do you do that? You do that in a short moment of complete relaxation. And in that short moment of complete relaxation, it, it is impossible not to allow everything to be exactly as it is. And from that space of just complete openness, we, we see everything clearly. You know, we discover this, this gentleness with ourselves, this uncontrived compassion, really allowing ourselves to be as we are with, with, with everything that's going on. You know, it's such a an amazing gift, the most amazing gift that I've ever given to myself was just to allow myself to be exactly as I was for short moments, repeated many times, until that comfort and that ease and that openness were obvious all of the time. And so it's a, it's a training process. You know, we have the capacity and we have the support to train up our capacity to recognize and rely on the openness of our intelligence. And the insights that this provides are quite amazing. So in terms of negativity and the negativity that I see in society and in the world, without the recognition as to all of this being more of the dynamic energy of open intelligence, it was so easy, as was shared, just to, to join in and to indulge in this negativity. And it made the world a really desperate place. You know, there, there didn't seem to be any hope. There didn't seem to be any possibility of redemption or salvation for myself or my society or the world or the planet. It, it, it just seemed completely overwhelmingly negative with no, no hope at all. And yet from the perspective of open intelligence, what changes is the insight that we have on, into that negativity. So the negativity, rather than being something that is threatening to open intelligence or that we have to be afraid of or that we need to indulge in and just go along with this pervasive negativity, actually now provides us clear and precise insights into the solutions that we can provide both to ourselves and to our society and to our planet. So we don't ignore the negativity, we don't bury our heads in the sand and pretend everything's rosy. We continue to rely on open intelligence for short moments with all of the negativity. And this is the way we access the most comprehensive intelligence that we have access to. Allowing ourselves to experience everything, because in that way we see everything clearly but we're no longer fooled by any of the descriptions, including the descriptions about the negativity, about how desperate everything is. There are certainly things in this world that need to change. But whilst we are still tackling those problems from the perspective of data having an independent nature, from the perspective of not recognizing the beneficial potency of the negativity, then all of the virtuous acts that we can do really will never fundamentally change the way that we are living both personally and collectively. So we may go about doing all of these incredible things and many of them can be very worthwhile but at the same time we're not actually fundamentally challenging the foundations on which this whole system is built. The assumptions and the assumption that we are somehow fundamentally flawed. And from there we need to go out and fix ourselves and fix the world and help everybody else from the perspective that it is deeply flawed. Coming from the perspective of total openness changes everything. We're no longer a victim to anything. The institutions that we build from the perspective of open intelligence are institutions and organizations that empower people 
to recognize their natural perfection as open intelligence and then to go out into the world and to really make a difference. And that's why I see the importance of balanced view. Because what we're doing here is training people up to recognize and to utilize the power of their mind for the benefit of all. With whatever activities or life you lead. And the data will continue to remain unpredictable and wild, regardless of what choices you make. You will continue to have this stream of data. From the perspective of open intelligence, that stream of data will continue to be an opportunity to be of benefit and to gain more confidence in open intelligence. Whatever choice you make and whatever circumstance you find yourself in, and I've seen this for myself again and again, so powerfully and clearly. And whatever life provides me with, whatever experience or circumstance I find myself in, sometimes they're, they're pleasant and easy and sometimes they're not so pleasant and very challenging. All of them have provided me with this opportunity to gain more and more confidence with open intelligence and the whole range of its dynamic display this incredible performance of data. Everything allows me this opportunity without exception. There's no datum that I have ever found that occurred anywhere other than within this vast expanse of open intelligence. No experience, no thought, emotion, physical sensation or any, anything else at all. All of it effortlessly encompassed within this vast expanse. And so from that perspective, everything provides fuel for gaining confidence in open intelligence. And the focus shifts then from a complete focus only on the data, on the, on the descriptions, on my thoughts, emotions and sensations, describing them, thinking about them, sorting them, good, bad, negative, do I like this, do I not like this, continually trying to work out what I needed to do to make myself happy, to fix myself, to fix the circumstance, to fix the people around me. And to discover the simplicity of the solution of just allowing everything to be exactly as it is. And then allowing effortlessly the action to flow from there. Without thinking about it at all. Just keeping the focus on myself and my data for short moments repeated many times. So simple and yet so profound, because without this recognition, life is just a, a series of confusing experiences that we do our best to manage. From the perspective of open intelligence, everything becomes an opportunity to express our beneficial potency. We give up the right to be a victim naturally. We give up the right to blame people, places and things for the data that we have and life shifts. It becomes a, a completely different experience rather than something that we have to endure or deal with. It's something that we can empower with this beneficial potency. This desire and this belief I had that my life was worthwhile. That I knew I had something to contribute to the world. I find that capacity and I find that fulfillment in open intelligence. I find my capacity to contribute to whatever circumstance I'm in, in that short moment of complete relaxation. It's always as simple as that. I know though that I needed reminding about that and I need constant reminding. And, and that's the power of the, the Four Mainstays. To live a Four Mainstays lifestyle is just to immerse yourself in an, in an environment where you're continually reminded again and again and again just to allow everything to be exactly as it is. Just to repeat the short moment of complete relaxation and to see what happens from there. Because when you're completely relaxed and open, what you're allowing is this total responsiveness without the need for any agenda or for any contrived behavior or for any contrived virtuous acts. 
you will find yourself being spontaneously of benefit to yourself and other people with a potency that goes way beyond anything that can be imagined from a conventional description of what life is all about. And so this is the main way that life has changed for me. Gaining confidence in my capacity to live a life of benefit to all in a completely natural, easy-going, uncontrived way. And I had no idea that life could be like that. I had no idea that I could live a life like that. And I am no different from any of you. We all have access to this same support network. We can all take short moments whenever we naturally remember. We can participate in written trainings which evoke this instinctive recognition and give you an opportunity to ask questions to a trainer who will simply share their experience of gaining confidence in open intelligence and how that looks for them. To spend time with a community of people, with other people that have made this choice to rely on open intelligence, given up the right to be a victim, so supportive. Because it allows you to recognize in yourself what other people are committing to. You see other people just like you you see them making this stand for open intelligence and it's so inspiring. If they can do it, then maybe, maybe, just maybe, there's a chance I can do it too. For me, that was incredible to see, to see this in other people. It allowed me to recognize it in myself. You know, we learn so much from each other, but more from what we don't say than what we say. It's the way that we are, it's the, the things that we do. That's what we learn from and that, that powerful example that we can all set. So I think it's incredible that we have this going on in the world now. And making this difference and it, it, it begins to dawn on you how important each of our contributions are. This ripple effect that we have in the world with everybody we know and the people that we don't know, the people that just see you in, in the street with your completely open, easy-going attitude, that perhaps you don't even notice, the shopkeeper that you smile at in the morning. So the effect that we have through making this choice is way beyond anything that we could possibly imagine. We are all already totally connected in open intelligence with everyone and everything. So by us recognizing this and making this stand, the contribution we make is immense. 